Hey everyone, it's me, Cynthia Ray here, and today is session three of our 21 Day Reset Cleanse uh, sessions for our group. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you a little bit about pesticides and foods and food additives and preservatives that we need to look out for that can really be uh, detrimental to our health and well-being, um, such as uh, you know cancer-causing agents or ones that disrupt hormone balance. Um, and promote weight gain and make it difficult to lose weight or just be healthy overall. So today I'm going to share with you some information um, that I've been researching on. I've actually been enjoying um, this day of researching and understanding what it means um, to eat a whole food diet, to make sure that the foods that you eat are, are organic or have minimal pesticide residue or um, making sure that it's foods that aren't promoting hormone imbalance and gut um, and issues with gut health as far as hormone balance goes. So I haven't been researching a particular website which I really enjoy, uh, which is called the Environmental Workers Group or Working Group. And they're an organization that has their eye and research on looking at food additives, preservatives, um, or maybe even um, chemicals in your um, makeup, chemicals in your cleaning products at home, in your water, and really helping you to understand what to look out for, for your best um, health, for your best wellness lifestyle. So I'm gonna share with you today what I learned from them. And I would definitely encourage you to take a look at their website. It's the, it's EWG, EWG.org. And on there you can find all kinds of information about um, the types of chemicals to look out for in your skin products, in your hair products, in your household cleaners and also foods. And um, they actually have an app too, which is really cool. They have an app that you can download onto your phone. And when you're at the store, you can actually scan it, scan the, um, the code on it, and it'll pop up and tell you what ingredients in there are good or are not good. So it makes it super easy um, to do that and really know what you're doing. So because we are focusing on detoxing our bodies and ridding any um, potential hazards from toxins that are coming at us or in us, um, I'd like to share with you today about toxins and additives in foods uh, mainly, and then you can check out their website to look for the chemicals that are in, found in food and also, not food, in, in um, hair, skin, and nail products and also cleaning products for your home. So, okay, so I'm gonna show you a video first from the EWG. And I told you guys about this before in the first class, but we're gonna go over the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 list that the EWG puts out. So this list, uh, the Dirty Dozen, are the top 12 foods that you wanna make sure to get organic. So these Dirty Dozen are the ones that have the most pesticide residue in them that you wanna make sure to get organic. Um, and then the Clean 15 list is the list of uh, produce that you could purchase not organic to save some money um, and your health because they have a limited or low amount of pesticide residue in them. So Dirty Dozen is the ones you wanna get organic and the Clean 15 are the ones that you don't have to get organic. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of videos to give you a little bit more of an understanding of what those foods are, how that works, and then also share with you a video from Dr. Weil, who I shared with you last week, and some of his comments about this particular list from the EWG. Okay, let me share my screen with you. Okay, so we'll watch the one for the EWG first. Thank you. 
Okay, so what um, looking at that list reminded me of is one of the easiest ways, at least for me, to know um, whether or not foods should be purchased organic is what I found in common with all of the dirty dozen foods or produce is that it's either leafy greens or like lettuces and spinach and kale or uh, fruits with a softer peel like peaches, nectarines, um, apples, um, strawberries. Um, I think it said honeydew melon. I have to double check, but it's usually the ones or the, I know grapes were on there. The ones that you have a softer peel, which would be more porous um, to pesticides getting in. And the ones that are a little harder, like bananas and avocado, um, cantaloupe and watermelon, things like that don't need to be organic. So anyway, I have the, I also shared the list on our Facebook group page. So if you want to take a look at that, you can download and print it, or you can go to the ewg.org website, and they have the list on there that you can download and take with you to the grocery store. So, okay, let me share with you now Dr. Weil and his impression of how to live out the Dirty Dozen Clean 15 lifestyle from the list you guys just saw. So let me share my screen again. Okay. Okay, here we go. Pesticides are toxins and they're, they can't be good for you. So the only question is how bad they are. And I think in many cases, the answer is pretty bad. A lot of these chemicals are toxic to the nervous system. Uh, others may disrupt endocrine function in the body. Uh, they may increase risk of cancer and other chronic diseases. Uh, so I think we should all be trying to take action to minimize our exposure to pesticides, including residues of pesticides on foods we eat. I think the, you know, the, an obvious one with food is to try to buy food that's certified organic because under the federal organic standards, uh, these chemical pesticides can't be used. And we have very good data showing that if uh, people eat organic, that measurable pesticide levels in, uh, in their tissues drop. And this has been shown with kids uh, as well. For many people, buying organic is difficult. Either it's not easily available in areas where you live, or it's too expensive and not practical. And I've always said that uh, it would be wise to learn which crops are most likely to carry pesticide residues, and in those instances, to try to get organic versions or to reduce consumption or avoid the conventional varieties. The Clean 15 are the 15 least contaminated crops. So I think these are things that you can, you know, you can buy in conventional versions and not worry about them. Uh, and if you're on a tight budget, these are the foods to concentrate on. If you simply shift from eating foods from the Dirty Dozen list to the Clean 15 list, you will have a measurable drop in tissue accumulations of pesticides. I would say with the Dirty Dozen List, and this is what I do in my own life, is that I say if I can't get organic versions of those, I'm not going to eat them. Okay. So isn't he so cool? I just love listening to him. He's with his beard and everything, he seems so wise to me. <laughs> but he, actually he is, he's actually a wealth of knowledge. So um, one of the things that I wanted to remind you of too is that I was looking a little bit more into the Dirty Dozen list and it looks like they added a new, a new product, a new produce product, um, which are raisins. And so I was researching that earlier and found that um, raisins actually have a high amount of pesticide residue within them. 
um, and some higher than others, of course. I don't, they didn't say which brands in particular, but it did say that the best way to get the least amount of pesticide residue is to purchase organic raisins. But unfortunately, it was found that there are some amounts of pesticide residue in organic raisins also. Um, and if anything, if you do want raisins or enjoy them, to at least get organic ones that have the least amount of pesticide residue in them or just avoid them. So the other thing that he was mentioning on the video was about um, saving money. So saving money with um, uh, not having to buy everything organic. So the thing is, truly at these days, purchasing organic uh, produce really isn't that much more than purchasing traditionally raised produce um, that has pesticides in them. Um, and besides the money that you spend now is going to be much less than the amount of money you're going to have to spend in doctor's bills and hormone repair and balance uh, medications and, you know, the, just not to mention just the way that you feel, you know, if you're going to make a choice now to eat foods that have less or no pesticide residue in them, your quality of life is going to be so much better <laughs> as you age. And you're going to end up sending, saving much more money than you're going to actually spend right now. So anyway, just want to let you know about that. Um, what else? Okay, so I also want to share with you some information about chemicals that are found in foods and things that you want to look for when purchasing um, packaged products. So what it really comes down to is the closer to nature the food is, the better it is for your body, right? Our bodies weren't designed to synthesize and um, process chemicals. They're designed to process, digest, and absorb whole food products that God put on the land for us. So we are organic beings, and so is the food that's produced in nature, including animals, right? So if we're adding hormones, synthetic hormones to animals, if we're adding um, pesticides and chemicals to foods, it's not a match for our body and our body's gonna respond. So in order to prevent disease, it pretty practical, makes a lot of sense, is to reduce the amount of processed food that contain chemicals and pesticides in them for optimal well-being. Super simple. Actually, it's also one of the ways to help, like I was talking about before, one of the ways to help to um, keep your hormones in check and uh, keeping in balance and staying away from um, getting them in out of balance. Um, it's out of balance hormones. It actually increases your risk for abdominal fat, um, fat in your hips and thighs, um, because uh, it elevates the amount of uh, estrogen in your body. And estrogen actually resides in fat cells. So the more fat you have on your body, the more estrogen is within your body, and the more estrogen, the more fat's produced. So um, that actually can be eliminated or limited when you're choosing foods that um, don't have added chemicals in them or uh, extra toxins that's going to store in those fat cells. So anyhow, okay, so I'm just gonna share with you um, a few of the food items that are recommended to eliminate in your diet um, from the EWG. So I actually posted a, a list of all the uh, food additives in additives and chemicals from the EWG website. So I'm just going to go through a few of them with you. So let me see here. Okay, so one of the first ones that I really, that caught my eye, that I thought was interesting, um, which has been interesting for me, to me for a while, and we've actually decided to eliminate this in our diet, was nitrates and nitrites. So these particular chemicals are typically found either in wine or cured meats like salami and bacon. So the best way to get these out of your diet is to purchase foods that are nitrate or nitrite free. Um, there are certain kinds of wines that you can purchase. I know there's a company called Dry Farm Wines that produces or creates a wine that is low in sugar and also in the preservatives. So nitrates and nitrates are actually preservatives that are found in meats or wine um, to help sustain them for longer. You've probably seen like, for example, um, a salami that lasts forever. <laughs> um, it's because of the nitrates in it as, act as a preservative. So nitrates um, have been linked to causing stomach cancer and they're also associated with cancer of the esophagus and has been shown to have an increased risk in people who eat cured meats often, which are high in nitrates. 
Um, some nutritious foods such as spinach and other leafy vegetables are naturally high in nitrates. However, human studies on nitrate make intake from vegetables have found no association with stomach cancer or an increased of disease, increased risk of disease. So it's pretty cool, right? So it's found in nature, but when it's added as a chemical preservative, it causes problems. But when it's found in nature, it doesn't. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> okay, so those are nitrates. Um, get back to my list here. Okay, the next one is potassium bromate. So I'm gonna be giving you guys a few different large chemical words. And I'll, that, like I said, they'll be on the list of the foods I'm gonna post. I have already posted in our group. So you can download that and print it. Um, but essentially, if you're looking at a package of food and looking on the ingredients label, if it has uh, chemical names in there, it's most likely not gonna be a whole food. So just look for that. A lot, I know like, for example, at Trader Joe's, I'll get um, some packaged foods and they just have full, whole food ingredients that I recognize and can understand. So um, just, just keep that in mind. So potassium bromate, uh, potassium bromate is used to strengthen bread and cracker dough to help it rise during baking, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's listed as a carcinogen by the state of California and the International Cancer Agency classifies it as a possible human carcinogen. And carcinogen means something that's cancer causing. Um, so baking converts most potassium bromate to non-carcinogenic potassium bromide but research in the United Kingdom has shown that bromate residues are still detectable in the bread. So this particular item, but potassium bromate, is actually not allowed in foods in the United Kingdom and also in Canada, it's prohibited. So I don't know why the US still allows it. Anyway, take a look at your breads and look for potassium bromate. Um, what you can do is just, of course, look for uh, breads that don't have it. And usually organic breads um, don't have potassium bromate, but take a look and see what you can find. Okay. The next one is propyl paraben. So propyl, propyl, propyl paraben, or it's P-R-O-P-Y-L, propyl paraben, P-A-R-A-B-E-N. Uh, propyl paraben is an endocrine disrupting chemical. That means it messes with your hormones or your endocrine system. Um, and unfortunately, in, in our country, it's generally recognized as safe. So it has been found um, to be a weak synthetic estrogen. It can alter expression of genes, including those in breast related, including those, where am I here? Propylparaben has been reported to accelerate the growth of breast cancer cells and impaired fertility in women. So how could that be safe? So look for that propylparaben. It's usually found as a preservative in foods like tortillas, muffins, and food dyes. So take a look out for those. Um, of course, check the product labels for propylparaben and avoid it. Um, tell food companies that hormone disrupting chemicals should not be allowed in our food in the U.S. So I'm going to be doing a talk on um, hormone balance and um, getting your hormones back in balance and what types of things you can do to do that. And I'll be talking a little bit more about um, all of these factors. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, one more uh, is BHA. This is actually a common BHA and BHT. I remember hearing about that a lot when I was in college. And BHA and BHT are usually found in milk as a um, preservative. Um, it's also found, let's see, what does it have here? It's a preservative and it looks like it's also reasonably anticipated to be a human carcinogen, so it causes cancer. Um, BHA causes tumors in animals, although there is a debate about whether these findings are relevant to humans. I actually remember learning that in college too, that their, their defense was that really didn't um, seem to be that much of a problem for humans, but I don't know, you never know. So the European Union classifies BHA as an endocrine disruptor, like I said. Uh, at higher doses, it can lower testosterone and the thyroid hormone thyroxin and adversely affects sperm quality and sex organs of rats. One study reported that female rats given lower doses had a disease in uterine, in uterine sorry, had a decrease in uterine weight, which may result from effects on estrogen metabolism. So it's definitely gonna affect estrogen levels in your body. 
Uh, a wide variety of foods contain BHA, including chips and preserved meats. It's also added to fats and to foods that contain fats and is allowed as a preservative in flavoring. So just make sure to look at your food labels for BHA, BHA and BHT and see how you can avoid those. So, okay, the last thing I'm gonna to explain to you, there's more on this list, but one of the things um, that I wanna to talk to you a little bit about too is um, food flavors, like food flavorings, ingredients, and artificial colors. So I don't know if you've heard this before, but I know I've heard um, several times that, and I've re in this research too, it shows that added food coloring and food flavors actually increase hyperactivity in children. So especially children who do struggle with ADHD or ADD um, should definitely avoid um, foods that have artificial sweeteners, colors, and preservatives um, because it actually increases their symptoms. So that's, I think that's one of the major things that I found with that. Um, the term natural flavor finds its way into more than a quarter of the EWG's roster of 80,000 foods in the food scores data page, database with only salt, water, and sugar mentioned more frequently on food labels. Artificial flavors are also very common food additives appearing on one of every seven labels. So let's see here. The thing is, even if it says natural flavoring, I don't think anybody really knows what is in that. Um, since the FDA is very tight, as we can see so far on some of these chemical additives, Natural flavoring or flavoring can be such a general statement and we really don't know what's in them. So you want to be careful about that. Um, yeah, so the other thing too is with artificial colors, um, there's an ongoing debate about the effects of synthetic FD, it's FD and C colors in children's behavior. So FD and C are the different colors that you can find in that artificial colors that you can find in food. Have you guys ever seen like red number one or blue number two, yellow number six or whatever? Those are the FD and C colors that actually um, disrupt the brain chemistry. So anyway, so I just wanna share with those of you today so you know what to look for um, as you step into your detox lifestyle so you can eliminate those toxins and artificial flavors, artificial colors, preservatives, and pesticides. So I hope that gave you a little bit of understanding. You can use your uh, Dirty Dozen Clean 15 list to print out and take with you to the grocery store. And like Dr. Weil said, I would just recommend if you can't find those organic products in organic, if you, if you can't find those Dirty Dozen products in an organic version, just avoid it and eat the ones that you can from the Dirty Dozen, or sorry, from the Clean 15 list. So anyhow, um, enjoy that. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm here for you. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.